All right, I'm going to go through some of the uh, homework questions or ones similar to ones that you'll have for uh, section 30.4 on linear functions. First one says from this graph, determine the slope of the y-intercept. So I always start with the y-intercept. And when I look at the graph to see where it crosses the y-axis, it looks to me like it's past going right there at negative 5. So my y-intercept is negative 5. They want an ordered pair, so it'll always be 0, negative 5. And then the slope, slope will be tougher to find. I think maybe this point right there is a point on the graph, I think. So it, to figure out what the slope of that be is I would have to figure out how many I have to go up. So it'd be 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 up, and only 2 over. So my slope is 8 over 2, and if I simplify that, that would be 4. So my slope is 4. So to write the equation of my line, it'll be y is equal to, uh, I know it's y equals mx plus b. So m is 4, x, and then the y-intercept is negative 5, 4x minus 5. Next question, write a slope-intercept equation. If they give you the slope and the y-intercept, well, that's pretty easy. y is equal to negative 17 over 13x, y-intercept minus 8. Done. Write a slope-intercept equation. So y is equal to mx plus b. Uh, the 3 over 20 is my slope. x, my y-intercept. Oh, that's not a y-intercept. To be a y-intercept, it, it would always be 0 and something. But this one's not. But it does give me an x and a y value. And so what I can do, here's an equation. And I know um, if I know an x and a y value, here and here, I can solve for b. And that's what I want to do. So it will be 3 over 20 times the x value is 5 is equal to the y value is 7 plus b. So 7 is equal to 15 over 20 plus b. I think that's right. And then um, 7 is equal to, I can divide that. I think that's 3 quarters plus b. And then I'll subtract 3 quarters from each side. And again, you can do this on your calculator, or if you wanted to do it um, uh, with fractions, that's fine too. So I think that'd be six and a quarter, which is the same thing as 25 over four. So they want to know what the equation is, 25 over four, oh God, Jeff. Y is equal to, slope is 3 twentieths, x um, plus, it was plus 25 over four, that's my y-intercept. Okay, next question. Right slope intercept equation for a line that passes through these two points. So I first have to figure out my slope. So slope y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So this is x1, y1, x2, y2. So y2 is a negative 11 minus y1 is a 1 over x2 is a 3 minus x1 is a negative 1. Carefully, don't make mistakes on those minuses. Minus 11 minus 1 is a minus 12. 3 take away a negative 1. These will cancel or change both to positive. So 3 plus 1 is 4. So the slope here is a negative 3. Now we'll do the same thing as I did in the last question, where here's my equation, and I'll plug in what I know. I know the slope's negative 3. And then I also know an x and a y value. I'll plug those in. x is a negative 1 when y is a positive 1 plus b. Minus 3 times minus 1 is a positive 3 plus b is equal to 1. Subtract 3 from both sides, and I'll get b is equal to negative 2. So my equation then is y is equal to m, which is negative 3, x, and my y-intercept, which is a negative 2. Minus 2. Done. 
All right, uh, in this question, we're asked to do oh, the exact same thing. It's just written in a different form. Let me change that. So this is the point 8, negative 9. That'll be my x1, y1. And this point will be negative 2 and 11. There's my x2, y2. So let's first find the slope. y2, 11, minus y1, negative 9. Notice again the two minuses, careful with those. Over x2, negative 2 minus x1 is an 8. So 11 take away negative, so it'd be 11 plus 9, it'd be 20. And minus 2 minus 8 is a minus 10. Simplifying gives me a slope of minus 2. Okay, now let's take our general equation, plug in some things that we know. The slope is negative 2. An x value, let's use this point of x gives me a y value of negative 9 plus b. Negative 2 times 8 is negative 16. Add in 16 to both sides, and you came up with a y-intercept of 7. So h of x is equal to m, that's my m, minus 2x, and then in my y-intercept is plus 7. So there's my function. And then they say, what's h of 1? Well, my function is h of x is equal to minus 2x plus 7. So h of 1 will be what's the value of this function when you put a 1 in for x. Minus 2 times 1 is minus 2 plus 7. In this case, I'll get a 5. All right, here they say determine whether the lines are parallel or perpendicular. So each of the equations are written in the right form. They're written like this. If they'd have been written like this, like uh, minus 6x plus 7y equals minus 3, something like that, you'd have to change it so it looks like that. Um, but it's already in this form, so I just have to take a look at the slopes. So right there. So if the slopes are the same, if m1 is equal to m2, then the lines are parallel. If the product of the two slopes is equal to a negative 1, then the lines are perpendicular. Um, if they're not the same, so if they're not the same and their product isn't negative 1, they're neither. These ones aren't the same. They're both the same fraction, but one's plus 1 minus, not the same. And one isn't the negative reciprocal of the other, so you know they're... The lines are just crossed like that, nothing special. They, they won't be parallel, nor will they be per perfectly perpendicular. Okay, write a slope intercept for equation for a line passing through 8 and 17 that's parallel to this. So if my line's parallel to this, it means it has to have the same slope. So the slope of my line is a half, and it goes through that point. So I can use my formula, just plug things in. Slope is a half, and x value is 8, when the y value is 17, plus b. Half of 8 is 4. Subtract 4 from both sides, you get your y-intercept of b. So the equation of my line will be y is equal to 1 half x plus 13. That's my equation. Do we have that? Which answer was correct? Parallel, a half x plus 13. Oh, yeah, I got that. Oh, these two are right. It's not this one. And then it says perpendicular to something else. Oh. Now, if it's perpendicular, perpendicular, you'd have to flip that fraction over and change its sign. So that would have to be the slope of a perpendicular line. And this is the one that it, it is right there, not this one. So it has to be that answer right there. OK, the next question gives us some data. It says, model the data in the chart with a linear function. Use these points. So it gives you a bunch of points, but we want to use those points right there. And I'm going to let, like they did, let this here be 0. So this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
So 1994, really that point is 0, 52.7. And this point, 1998, that will be 4. So 4 and 61.2. OK, let x represent that. That Predict the egg production in 2000. Well, they already have a number for us there. So that's what they actually did. They probably should have said predict the egg, egg production in 2020 or something, if it stayed linear. But at any rate, I've got two points. And what I want to do is figure out what the um, slope is and what the equation of the line is. This point is real nice, though, because it's the y-intercept, because the x is 0. So I already know the b value is 52.7. I just have to determine what the uh, slope is. So let's do that. Let's call this x1, y1, x2, y2. So y2, 61.2 minus 52.7 over 4 take away 0. So at the top there, that would be, what, 7.3, 8.5, I think, over 4. So there's my slope is 8.5 over 4. You could probably uh, convert that into a fraction. So it'd be 2.1. Um, 2, 5, I think. OK, so that's my slope. Uh, so the linear model for the data would be y is equal to the slope, 2.125x, plus the y-intercept is that number right there, 52.7. There's my linear data. Then they say, what's the predict predicted egg production in 2000? Well, 2000 is six years since. So I would take that equation to well, 2.125. And for x, I'd plug in a 6 plus 52.7. Let me just check that and see what I get. I get 65.45. Interesting that it doesn't come out to the same number. But like I said, it should have, um, I should have used, they should have asked like 2010 or something. The other thing with these points, especially when they give you data, and these ones look like they're increasing. So if you have a chart, you might have things that look like this. So it looks like the data is following a straight line. But you may have numbers that aren't bang on the line. And that's what, what happens all the time when you're modeling data. OK, last question. Find k so the line containing the point that is parallel to the line containing the points that. Oh, that's an interesting question. So this is just playing with slope formula. So let's find the slope of the line that contains those two points, x1, y1, x2, y2. So y2 is minus 6 minus y1 is a 3 over x2 is a 1 minus uh, x1 is a 5. So I'm getting minus 9 over minus 4 or positive 9 over 4. So that's my slope. And they say, They've got another couple of points that are parallel to that line, so they have to have the same slope. Oh, so how am I going to use, do that? Maybe I'll just use my formula again. Uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And let's use these now as our points, x1, y1, x2, y2. So my slope is 9 fourths, 9 over 4 equals y2, 6 minus y1 is a k over x2 is a 2 minus x1 is a negative 5. OK, I'm feeling good here because I only have one variable, so I should be able to solve. Let's simplify a bit. Uh, 6 minus k, 2 minus a negative, that'll be plus, so that'll be a 7. OK, now I'll uh, multiply both sides by a common denominator, which would be 4 times 7. So I'm going to multiply this side by 4 times 7. 
I can do that as long as I multiply this side by 4 times 7. So on uh, the left side, the 4s cancel. 7 times 9 is 63 equals. Here the 7s cancel. And then I have 6 minus k times 4. Let's use distributive property there. So that'll be 24 minus 4k is equal to 63. Let's, uh, hmm. let's move the 4k over to this side and make it positive. And let's take the 63 to the other side and make it negative. So I have 4k is equal to, what's that, 40, 39? negative 39. Divide both sides by 4, and I get negative 39 over 4. So that'll be the value of k. That's a long, long question. It says type an integer or a dense decimal. Oh, so I could, if I wanted to, I could put negative 9.75 in there. Let me just do that. Negative 9.75. All right, hopefully that helps you with uh, homework for that section.